Hey guys, Luigi Edits here doing a tutorial on the effect called Camera Tracker 1.0. It's by the Foundry, and I've noticed it in a lot of recent edits. And I'm going to show you how to use it. You will need it as a plugin. I can't include it in the description because it's quite. It's not easy to like get. So if it's if you just search YouTube, you'll find it easy. Just do that, and you've got it. So. Some examples is here it was in Phase Prize the Absolute Refraction episode 14. It was uh on Afghan. It's it's like it's sort of advanced 2D motion tracking. Um and it's but it's really easy to do if that makes sense. And I used it here in my OC4. So yeah, here we go. So first if you want to import a cinematic or clip, um if you're better off recording your own cinematic because getting it from cinematic packs and whatever if you haven't got a capture card then um, I would recommend just getting someone else to record it for you because using you know presets and everything is just pointless um, uh, I don't know try and find this I have one Hang on, I need to organise this so much. I might as well use the one that I used for my um, 1v1 tourney. Just quickly use this one. Okay, so if you've recorded it from MW2 or whatever, you'll have these buttons here. If you just press S on the clip and go change this 135, it crops out the um, uh, all the buttons and the spectator and everything. And if you want, you can add a color correction, but I don't really want to do that at the moment. So let's get right into it. You go the Foundry Camera Tracker 1.0. And basically, all you got to do first is if you want, you can untick render during analysis, which means if it's unticked, it just has a box come up saying it's doing it. Or you can watch it actually track the frames, which I like to do so you know when it's like going to be finished and what frame it's on. So all you got to do is click track features. And depending on how long your cinematic is, it could take a long time or a short time. But, and yeah, it, it does all. And obviously, if you've got a good computer, it will render, um, it will, sorry, track features the fast fastest. So, yeah. But I'm just gonna pause this now because it will take a long time because it's about 12 second long cinematic. So. I'm just gonna pause it and come back when it's finished. Okay. Oh, yeah, and also, if it's tracking the features, you can't click off After Effects because it will stop. I don't know why it does this, but it does. So just leave it on the screen and let it do it. I recommend doing something else while it's doing it. But yeah, I'm just gonna pause it and be back in a minute. Okay, guys, uh, I'm back and this is just uh, finishing. And uh, basically, one thing I've got to say is that it actually goes forward and does it tracks it forward and then it tracks it backwards as well, so it has a more accurate, um, more accurate tracking sort of thing. So uh, it's nearly finished now. That took quite a long time for mine because it's quite a long cinematic. So here's so it finishes, gets to zero. Mine takes quite a long time to actually finalise it. Sort of, you know. Does the old not responding thing, but then it can't come straight back straight after, so it's alright. Just wait a little bit. So anyway, that's finished, and you see it makes loads of track points on here. Like loads, there's just so many, it's just like a black bar. So yeah, that's that. And now all you need to do is solve camera. So if you do that it say solved reference frame and whatever yours are and it says total RMS reprojection error and yours will be it, you, the highest I usually get is about two and I don't think that's anything to worry about to be honest and then so you do that that finishes processing setting camera data so then that finishes and then once you've done that you need to do one last thing within the plugin so it goes not responding again, does it every time. Let's <laughs> wait for that to finish again. 
Make sure you do this in full as well, in full uh, resolution, because it will not track as many points and it won't be as accurate. Accurate if you don't have it in full, so you're better off having it in full. Anyway, whoa, what the? It, that isn't good. Uh, anyway, it's back. Don't. I wouldn't recommend clicking off it because that was scary. <laughs> Um, so now it's sort of turned the tracks into solve camera so it's a bit smoother and you know they're just sort of optimized and then now if you just press create scene it will create a null object and a camera layer and it does go not responding for a long time okay now it's finished and if you see it, it creates a null object I think that's a null object anyway <laughs> and a camera layer so that's that done and if you're worried and all the tracks have gone, all the you know, all the tracking points, what you need to do is click on the clip and actually click on the you know, on the effect and it they all come back. Now what you wanna do is if you see, if you add text, say add text and put let's just go with VG Edits Tutorial One. So you got that and then you just increase it change that and then if you put that there in the middle and then to make it track with the layers that you've made all you need to do is you toggle the switches and the modes until you get this these options here and you just select the 3D layer here and if this has happened it disappears what use what that usually means is it's the point that it's tracked to is not in the right place where you want it to go. So all you need to do is click on the clip here and select camera tracker 1.0, and then you select a, a point that you want it to track to. So if like on my OCE4 it was sort of tracked, so it's just in front of the counter. So if you do that, just select that frame. You all you got to do is press. You click, hold control, and press again. Click, click your left click again, and it comes up with these options. And all you need to do is go ground plane and set. Oh, sorry, ground plane and set origin. Once again, this will do the camera data and film. See so now you can see the null object is there and it wasn't there before. So now all you got to do is click 3D layer, and the text is there. Okay, simple as that. Okay, so it's there, and if you move. Is you get the Y, the X, and the Z axis. The Z is, you know, going deeper or more towards you, and the X is across, and the Y is up or down. So, if you go back a bit like that, you just drag it forward or backwards, okay? Then you move it up a bit with the Y, and you move it slightly to the left, with the X. And then, if you want, you can change the color of it to. Let's just go for. What I like to do, I like to change the colour of each text that I do. So I'll make the bottom if it stops lagging. Hang on a second. Oh, it's just created a new text there, hang on. So you go there, then you just select what you want it to change colour, and then you just choose what colour you want. I think I use like a light blue. What I did on my colour correction, I brought down the saturation so it didn't have as much colour in it. Which you know is just on magic, but it looks. And now, if I put it in quarter so it doesn't lag, I'll do a run preview. Now, that doesn't look perfect, but it won't be perfect every time. Just remember that it, it depends on what frame you actually select. But yeah, that's sort of messed up, which is a bit disappointing considering I'm doing tutorial, but. Oh no, it hasn't messed up at all. It's just I've what I've done. I've made the z-axis too far back. So all I need to do, select it again, and I need to bring it forward so it's in front of the counter. And I've brought down the size of it in pixels and just brought it more together. And then if I run preview that, see there we go. Done. Simple as that. So now that did. That does take a long time, but it's really simple to do. 
And if you're wondering how I did it, so I got text. See, look, that's that's fine there. It's perfect. Yeah, I've just got it above the counter, but you know you can change that. And if you're wondering how I actually got text behind, if you look, I made it flashing and it comes in. There's text behind it. All I did was I duplicated the text layer. So you just control, hold Control C, and then press Control V, and it duplicates the text. And you should use the Z tool. The sorry, the Z axis, axis, and all it does is move it backwards, and it just tracks it to the same point. Even though the, the point is off um, of the screen, it still tracks it to that point. To be honest, I don't know how it does it, but it works, and that's all that matters. So it just goes through like that, and and you want to try and move the text so you don't go, so you literally don't go through like one of the letters. But so yeah, that's that. And then obviously you can just change that text and whatever. And also what I like to do is I like to go to if you go to effect, stylize and glow. It does add a nice glow to it. Obviously you want to change the settings to about 80. Um that makes a nice glow as well. Also adding a colour correction makes it look even nicer. Um <coughs> so yeah that's it to be honest and if you want to know how it like flashes in then all you need to do is keyframe the opacity by pressing press T on the text and then click on, on the stopwatch then I just go zero so, so start at zero then you go next frame two frames forward so make another keyframe at zero and you go next frame 100 and you go another one, two frames forward, go zero, one forward, just make it totally random, and that that's how I do it. Then there's probably a nice, like a better way to do it, but you know it looks fine in my opinion doing it like that. And also, if you've got text behind what you've done, like if you've got text in front and you want text behind, if when you duplicate the text, it puts it on top of the text that you have in front so what you need to do is just move that underneath and it's simple as that look so now it flashes in goes through that we just quickly run preview this much of time you know? 16 minutes wow um yeah that is a lot <laughs> oh well I'll try and cut it down a bit to make it a bit faster so then it just ram just ram preview this. I like to put it in quarter so it just literally ram previews it really fast. Goes through there. See, this camera tracker plugin is amazing. And yeah. I'm trying to put this advanced as possible so you guys know how to use it as much as possible, if you know what I mean. So look, if you just preview this. Oh that hang on that lag then. Sorry, sorry, sorry. So that flashes in, goes through it, simple as that, goes through there. Easy. It's an amazing nice effect, it just is amazing. <laughs> um, <clears throat> another thing I like to do is I like to render that, just render the whole composition. And then once you've done that, you put it back into the composition as the file that you rendered. And then you just press P on the clip, hold Alt and select the stopwatch type in wiggle then an open in bracket comma no sorry not a comma you go two comma then about eight or nine and you go close the bracket and it gives the clip like a wiggle but if you notice you've got black bars on the sides what you've got to do is go to effect stylize motion tile change the output width to 150 and the output height to 150 and you just mirror the edges and it stops any black edges coming up and obviously you can't see the black edges on this because I've scaled it up so you can't see the spectating in the buttons so yeah I'm gonna end it there because I've gone on for a long time 18 minutes wow <laughs> um, okay I hope that helped um, that was a pretty in-depth tutorial comment on what other tutorials you would like I'll do anything that I know and yeah
Thank you for watching. Goodbye.